the channel you want to listen to, Dover Community Radio. This is our brewery. The main uh, thrust of what we're trying to do is be to take brewing back to its traditional roots, which was from a farm, or in other cases, monasteries. We haven't got a monastery, so we're on a farm. Okay. And this is Ripple Steam Brewery. Uh, to say why we're obviously Ripple, because we're close to Ripple yeah. here. Uh, steam because we use steam boiler and we use steam heating on the hot liquor tank and the copper to which in our way is a better form of uh, a, a, a brewing technique that it stops ingress of bad waters getting into okay. the hot liquor so is that unusual uh not unusual a lot of big brewers use it but small brewers yes are fairly unusual okay. so we, we 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 stick to that we use traditional floor malt right uh, and whole hops so we're very much to, uh, you know trying to keep it how it should be okay now, as you can see here, these are converted stables, yeah. uh, and one of our main issues on, when we started this uh, project back in September of last year was that we're not on mains drainage, so hence this looks like an air, oh, air raid, air raid uh, <laughs> shelter, <laughs> is actually, that's got to clarify there, what happens, all, all our wastage, wastewater, etc., <coughs> flows through there and yep. it actually goes to the bottom, and the force of the water pushes it up the heavy uh, heavy particles lay at the bottom the clear water runs off to the soak away okay as, as, as the same as anywhere here yep. and then basically uh once a week or twice a week depending on how busy we are we then have to um uh, manually pass that that solid water or thick water yep. into a sump pump and up to this filtration system okay which the beauty of this filtration system is that all our solids um, are then treated with a carbon polymer mm -hmm. which allows it after about three to six months to be used as fertilizer right okay and here we are, and so it our, feeds back into yeah. the farm literally so we're fairly you know uh, pleased about that yeah that, uh, we can recycle where possible and that's all there but unfortunately with the cold weather we've had yes. <laughs> everything's freezing up it all so, comes to a standstill yeah, yes but anyway you can see part of what we had to do was build our loading bay yeah and our uh, pathway up to our storage area here so this was a project long in the uh, thinking yes, and planning well, i guess uh, myself and uh, peter and paul norris um been friends for a long while and uh, i've been involved in brewing back since the 80s okay. early 80s at canterbury brewery and uh, so basically it was an idea we always had and things just came to together this last year actually happened so this is storage you can see old stables still yes like very it. much so it all goes wrong very the whole yeah, you can even go back into that um this is just our storage of cars i mean one of the major costs for a small brewery are the cars i mean they well, cost i was going to say you've got steam ripple steam yeah. punched into them yeah. that's uh, but that's set they're 70 pound each plus that wow you've got and a so few big there. expense well we had to get a minimum of 200 and believe it or not there's only one major company now in the in the whole of uh, the UK that produce these, uh, Carmack up in Burton-on-Trent. Okay. We ca could go to France, but we're yeah, not well, sure about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep it in Burton, that's yeah, a no, good that's tradition. Right. So that, 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 they took, oh God, six to eight weeks all the leading time. So, grief. you know, we had to wait for those. But anyway, we've got those. Uh, one of the big things with small microbreweries, uh, as I say, I've been involved since the early 80s, and is cleanliness. Mm. This is a food process. Hence my funny attire. Yes, it's yes. all about. <laughs> You're not going fly fishing. No, <laughs> it's all about cleanliness. I mean, seventy percent of what we're doing here is engineering and, and food processing and cleanliness. Mm, yeah, and, yeah. And, and the exciting bit is what we've been doing. Is what you produce. Yeah. <laughs> so storage there of chemicals. This is our malt store. As you can see, we yeah. heavily caged in to stop any friendly uh, friends yes. coming in. And, yeah, yeah. There's and plenty there to attract them. We have full them. pest control here, but luckily this this uh, all helps. And there's our hops again, whole hops, as I say. Yeah. And we Kentish use. Kentish hops, I assume? Sorry? Kentish hops? Uh, we use well, a, a variety, but yes, we use an East Kent Goldings, right. uh, mainly, and also Syrian Goldings, okay. which are cut from abroad, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. But um, we're hoping to start growing, maybe next year, year after, dwarf hops ourselves. Really? So, you know, again, it's making it more back to that tradition. That's of quite the farm. exciting, actually, isn't it? Well, yeah, we hope so. Uh, it's not as easy. Obviously, we've got some help about planning and that and yeah. we're talking to DEFRA about it but hopefully we've got the ideal sort of soil because this used to be owned by locally Solis Farm okay and it used to be a big orchard and uh, where there's been orchard or brickworks which again with Eastery we've got brickworks around here is the right sort of soil for hops so clay yeah 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 is yeah. that right really yeah, yeah it helps just helps in, in their in their grain so the, the plan is to look for that and we would like to do that because again it's uh, about reinstating the farm to 
producing something right, as okay. it should be. And then, as you say, with your recycled water, of course. Yeah. 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 Anyway, we okay. come through here. This is our grist room. And this is where life starts off with the malted barley. Our recipe goes in there of the different types of malt. And uh, our grist mill, this, uh, the equipment you see, which you'll see in a minute, including this, all came from the majority of it came from the Dorset Brewing Company down in Weymouth, a nice gentleman called Giles Smith, who was expanding. So he took his uh, second-hand equipment, and you'll notice a lot of the old equipment comes actually traditionally from the dairy industry, because obviously it's stainless steel, food grade. Right, yeah. Uh, and some of these, I mean, the mash tun you'll see in a minute, it, it's got a plate to 1932 on it. Good you know, so, but it's, you wouldn't get the quality of steel I was going to say, built to last. Yeah. But, so we start off here with the uh, gristmill. Uh, we fill, fill the hopper with our malted barley, uh, turn on the tell on the mill, and what happens there? We've got a screw conveyor that goes up to another hopper, as you can see there, yep. the curtain uh, that goes to the mash hopper. So at that moment, I'll stop and we'll walk around because we've got hoist and everything to keep the manual. Yeah, handling, yeah, I can see that because it is all you know. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, yeah. Good. Right. Let's wander off. And you must be very regulated, I assume, because as you say, it is a food stuff. It isn't is it? a food process. Yeah. Hmm. So was it easy to set up and get all the necessary Well, as, as I say, my, my, my history is I've been involved in, in small breweries since 84 off and on. Yeah. Uh, first of all with the Canterbury Brewery and then and recently about five, six years ago, the meantime brewing in Greenwich. Oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, my experience has been sort of hands-on at so times. you knew how to handle it. Yeah. Right, here we go. So I'll start you through the process inside. Okay. Right, we start off life here with this rather large uh, uh, vessel which is called our hot liquor. And basically, what, as I mentioned, we use steam and that's the form of a, an indirect coil inside. Yeah. So there's no ingress of uh, bad waters into our, 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 our liquor. And liquor is, you and I, water. <laughs> but in yeah, brew terms, it's hot liquor. Okay. So we use a steam uh, uh, conduction system to, to, to heat up the water to, first of all, to about uh, 65, 68 degrees. Then we mix, when, uh, once we've transferred the uh, grist up to the mash hopper, we mix it through this masher yep. into our mash tun. And this, this is one of the vessels I was talking about. This actually, believe it or not, is 1932 from a, a dairy. Right. And we see the original plate on it underneath. And uh, it, it's solid. Yeah, that's going you would not get, yeah. And you would not get that quality of steel. And that all helps. It is, at this time, uh, um, an infusion of the uh, malted barley and hot water, which helps start bringing out the starches and killing off certain enzymes and the colour of course from the malt right, which okay. gives us a, a hot sweet wort yeah. and that's the basis of our beer is okay. a hot sweet wort a very vitreous liquid quite thick I'm going to say quite thick yeah. Yeah, yeah and right so we, uh, we, we start off here we heat this up mix it with the uh, uh, malted grist and then we um, uh, leave it to uh, infuse for about an hour we recirculate to help uh, sort of spread the liquid for a short time, a few minutes. And then we then connect to our copper here or brew kettle, which is sealed up now because we're actually brewing, as you can see, yep. this very moment. But we start off by pumping from the bottom. That way it reduces oxygenization into, uh, into the wort. We pump it through and we then add more hot water to get to our volume we need okay. to bring. Um, so you add hot water to the, the syrup? Yeah, basically. yeah, that's yeah. it. For a spa arm, which uh, yeah. is in bits there at the moment, being yeah. cleaned, as we've just brewed. Um, as we're filling this up, we put in our first hops, about two-thirds of the hops mm -hmm. that we're using for the whole brew going early. And then later, about which will be in the back ne next hour, we put in our last third of hops, which again are to get these lovely oils, yeah. lovely flavours that come from hops. Yeah, from the hops. And on this particular, is our best bitter, and we're using... Uh, Styrian Goldings two thirds and East Kent Goldings one third. So is it the blend of the hops? Yeah, it's it? yeah. all those flavours, and yeah. what we, uh, that we find the Styrian gives a nice peachy flavour, okay. and the Goldings East Kent Goldings give a nice appley flavour, and they balance out. Yeah. So we get a nice, yeah. with the, obviously with the malt, yeah. a nice uh, rounded. Okay. Rounded and that's your experience that tells you that, or well, that's plenty of tasting as well. Plenty of tasting, plenty of tasting. Obviously, we just started brewing um, just before Christmas, and obviously we listen to all the locals and. Uh, but it's looking what's what's available in the market yeah, and yeah. what we think is needed in this area. Yeah. So this uh, the mash tun heats up to seventy four. 
when we take it here, the, the, this has got a coil, the brew kettle in it, and we heat again the wort up to 104 degrees. And hence, as you can see at this moment, and the yeah, smell. The steam coming out the top. The steam, well, is, is the vapor coming out yeah, with yeah. a lovely hot smell, and obviously uh, helps stabilize the product by increasing that heating. Yeah, yeah. We then, uh, at that point, we would then be ready to um, put into our fermenting vessels, these four vessels you can see here, which we're cleaning at the moment. How long is it in the kettle, sorry? Uh, about an hour, hour and oh, a half. Oh, really? Just that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe two hours maximum. Yeah. Right, so obviously yeah. we've got a temperature here 104 degrees. Yeah. We need to get the fermenters about 22 because if it's higher than say 24, it'll come off the yeast okay. when we pitch it. Yeah. I put the yeast in. Yeah. So for that, we use this little machine here, a heat exchanger, which is very, yeah. um, again, a very valuable tool. Yeah. Basically, the hot water passes one side, chilled water the other. The chilled water then takes exchanges uh, from chilled the hot heat. And goes back into hot liquor to okay. ready for tomorrow. So that's all recycled yeah, again. Yeah, again yeah. it keeps okay. yeah, our carbon footprint down. Yeah, yeah. And we're very pleased with that. This uh, is our chiller, which helps. Basically, right. when we put into the fermenters, we're going to leave them there with the yeast, fermenting hopefully around about 19, 21 degrees for about three or four days to let the yeast work. Okay. By that time, usually it's and obviously we take daily checks on yeah, this yeah. uh, on its uh, saccharum sugar levels and temperature levels once three or four days are up we let it we, uh, we let it finish for a day or so and then we're ready to start casking and obviously cask as you know has a t our cask our cask condition so basically we take from the fermenters we pump into the cask and we add brewer sugars right. and finings to help stabilize it but also sugars to help condition it in in the in the uh, in its process in, inside the cask last bit of the jigsaw, which is our conditioning room. You can see this is quite warm in here compared to today's temperature, about 13 degrees. Here, actually, and so. what we're doing before this goes out to the trade, to our customers, we're starting to condition the beer. Above 12, the yeast is slowly working with the sugars in right. the cask. Okay. And it is, that's where you get the nice cask yeah. condition from, a nice head, nice body to so the So it's the yeast and the sugars working together? Yeah, yeah, yeah on a secondary final. fermentation. Okay. On a secondary fermentation. Uh, here, over here we've got the last of our winter brew, uh, um, uh, which is actually quite unusually has got uh, about 20% of the malt in it is uh, a beechwood smoke malt from Bamberg in Bavaria. Really? Which uh, my background from meantime, we used to make real lagers. So I think winter always reminds me of smoke. Okay. And it's, uh, you know, the idea was to add that. Unfortunately, I haven't got any to give you a taste. Of, so <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> take my word. But that's our best bitter. Obviously, we're ready to tomorrow start casking out some yep. more best bitter. But uh, so yeah. is the best bitter the one that's selling? I mean, yeah, I guess Th it's that's our volume. Brew. That's our volume. Yeah, the yeah. winter ale was the first brew we did, a small brew, just to really uh, trial it and try the equipment because, as I say, this is a you can see it's quite a, a engineering, but you know, a yeah. process here. Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. And so it's a very uh, important to get used to the equipment yeah. different pumps do this timings etc so how many brews have you made so far oh this is about our eighth brew really yeah yeah, yeah. that's good but what we're doing we're keeping it around about 20 22 casts of nine gallons in each brew because we think it's right to keep it i guess handcrafted sure. in that way not too big a volume yeah yeah, yeah. and but then obviously we, we're trying to reciprocate each time repeat what we've done and yeah uh, that, that, that that's uh well, that's you know what our job is. I mean, we sure. have from the first brew of Best Bitter, we use all Styrian Goldings on the first. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Styrian Goldings. But uh, uh, what we've done the second time is add two, two thirds Styrian, one third East Kent Goldings. Okay. So we think that makes it better. Flavor. And is some of that feedback from your customers? Uh, yes, uh, uh, more from the yes, uh, you know, the pub owners. Yeah. Uh, and, and also directly from the customers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, there we, we, we are, really. They're all ready to go. We're all ready to go. Very busy. But Good. Let, me, let me give you a little okay. sample if I can find it. All right, thanks. And how did you find the reception from the, the local trade? Very good. Um, one, one or two, I think, I think in their enthusiasm, tended to put the, uh, Cheers, put the beer on uh, too soon. Because it right. does need conditioning. Obviously, this time of year, it's been very cold here. As you know, last week, particularly cold. Yeah. I mean, we had the boiler froze up, the waste <laughs> disposal froze up, and uh, 
so that's why we've increased the temperature in the condition room to get it to a, to a temperature because really it should at least take two or three year, uh, days in a, um, a pub cellar to get you know acclimatised and then it, 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 the right temperature around 52 degrees Fahrenheit it will start working again that secondary uh, uh, fermentation. So what's, what's the, what is the temp is it literally the combination of the two? It's all about temperature yeah, yeah. yeah yeast yeah. is very cheers. yeah yeah cheers yeast is very very um uh, you know, affected by temperature. Exactly. Too low, yeah. it dies. Yeah. Too high, it dies. So it's oh, got to be right. Okay. It's got to right. be right. right. It's very right. temperate. Very temperate. And it's top fermenting yeast, and uh, that's where you can, you know, the bit of fizz in, in the beer, mm. the sparkle mm. in the beer, comes from that fermentation. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that's our best bit, which we like the colour. We think it's a nice. That's very drinkable. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> very drinkable. Well, that's for, and you're drinking out of a gad's glass. I should yeah, tell I, you that. I, know this. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. That's from the beer festival, is it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it is there. Obviously, as you know, a lot, a lot of microbreweries setting up, yep. uh, especially in Kent, at the moment. I think there's about 14 or 15 or 16 as we talk. I think it's more than. Yeah, that there's been about 80 yeah, or 90 years or something. And which is great because I don't think any of us. Uh, I think certainly we should. You should never be frightened of competition because it's up to you then to produce something that's good, and that helps the customer. Yep. But also, I think younger people. Uh, I've got a son who's in his mid 20s. He's very much, I guess, because of me, a little bit, but yeah. drinking real ale, but his friends are as well. Yeah. And I think uh, there is a market for it. No, no. Because people want, you know, we've been fed up with big brands, bands. Yeah. We want something local. And that's what we're trying to emphasize is we're trying to get as much local and, and supply locally. Well, especially I mean, if you grow your own. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's right. That's yeah. very unique, isn't it? Well, we hope so. We yeah. Hope so. yeah. And uh, is my right in thinking there was some sort of government? Initiative support. Whatever. There, there is a DEFRA do have a regeneration grant, but yeah, you know, obviously the early days yet. Yeah, we yeah. will bang on their door. Okay, okay, and, and use our local MP to help us, no doubt. Well, I'm sure we'll support you. <laughs> but no, it was nice to see because uh, there's you and there's the guys at Cullen's Yard who. Yeah, are, yeah, yeah, who absolutely. This part, though, yeah, Kent which again is, 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 you know, as I say, that's great because competition should be good. Well, also, I mean, you've only got to walk around the beer festival the other yeah. week. To see there's the so many different oh, types of yeah, beer it's not just beer is it I suppose well I think you know we very much want to try and keep without going off too many types try and keep it fairly fairly together yeah. uh, certainly initially because it's yeah. all it's all about getting used to the equipment getting yeah, yeah. used to the routine uh, and, and and producing which is very important uh, 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 you know quality consistent consistent quality, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, product we really must do that and that's our plan and where do you supply to? Uh, very area? locally, yeah, very locally. I mean, uh, we've been out to Staple, we've been to uh, the Butcher's Arms at Hearn. Right. Uh, a gentleman came over there uh, here and had a look at the brewery and bought some. I think we're at Westgate, the Baker's, uh, is it the Baker's? Oh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, the, the Micropub, yeah, there. Um, so, the Baker's shop, we, we've had. Oh, I know, yeah, the yeah, 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 and uh, locally, we've got a Micropub just for his reproaching deal. And uh, they've had a very good weekend with their uh, first Firkin of our uh, best bitter, okay. which went down very well. So we're very pleased. Yeah. Very good indeed. And, and expansion, presumably. That's what it's all well, about. Well, it's yeah. We, our plan is very much to 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 keep it tight, to keep to a, a again going back to this food and uh, food process. Uh, I think in the past a lot of small brewers have gone out too quick and too fast, and that's where you get infection problems, quality problems. Because, again, going back to the steam uh, boiler, one of the other issues we have, apart from heating the hot liquor uh, tank and heating the uh, copper, uh, is we have a steam hose which we sterilise in the cleaning process of our cars when they return, is steam. Oh, uh, of course. And at yeah. a very high temperature, and it, that, again, helps reduce infection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And presumably it's time consuming. It's time. It's very hands-on, very labour-intensified. Yeah, it's a long day, um, but uh, yeah, we're all enjoying it at the moment. So, well, I'm enjoying this. Good. Very good. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, good luck with this. Thank you. The sound of Whitecliffs Country. This is DCR.